Our role is to be a catalyst in many ways. We want to help raise awareness, first of all, of this opportunity that's presented by big data for the field of, of development and humanitarian work. Um, through raising awareness, we, we find that we are able to build strong partnerships and find communities of practice to work with us. That means both on the international development and humanitarian side, so it takes experts like you who have questions that they want to answer, and it takes experts from the data science and technology communities like Hillary and other, others in that field to be able to work with us to start answering those questions. And together we do R&D. We, we're missing a friend. Uh, innovation and, and uh, research and development, that is. So we, we collaborate, we do research projects, we explore, we test, we, we share what we learn in the effort to build the capacity as we go. When we share everything we learn, we work through a network of Pulse Labs, which is our, it was our physical spaces uh, in three locations at this time, uh, where we do these kinds of projects. Um, so concretely, to do that flow, um, our, our main areas are, of work are, are in three pieces. One is the research and development. So we work uh, as I mentioned, with our partners to do uh, projects, collaborative R&D projects, so taking a new data source, trying to answer a question. For example, can you use social media to understand people's perceptions about HIV, you know, in, t in order to supplement the every few year major survey that you do? Uh, could you use mobile phone data to understand drought in a new way? So we do these kinds of R&D projects on an ongoing basis with partners. Um, Partnerships is the second piece. We can't do any of that R&D without partners. So that's partners, again, in the UN system, but it's also partners in the technology and data science communities. Uh, and the partners we need to do the advocacy that's important. As Robert highlighted, the privacy piece is very critical. So we also have partnerships with the community <coughs> that's dealing with digital privacy and try to gain expertise from learning from those who are doing this in their daily work to inform our work. Um, and of course, working with private sector companies who have the data sources that we want to try to analyze uh, and the new techniques in order to make the analysis happen. And where, the, where we do that is through our network of Pulse Labs. We have, at this time, uh, an office here in New York that was established uh, in the end of 2009, early 2010. Um, and we have several of our staff here. If you want to just raise your hands just so you can see uh, some of our team. Um, we have a Pulse Lab in Jakarta, which was launched in October 2012. And later this year, uh, we'll be launching uh, the, the first few staff people for Pulse Lab Kampala. Um, the Pulse Labs reside in uh, the UN Resident Coordinator's Office. So in each country, they work together with the member states and with the UN system, the whole UN system. Um, the staff that we, we have include data scientists, data engineers, communications or partnership specialists, legal, private, legal and privacy officers, that's the nature of the skill set that they bring. And they collaborate with the, with the country, the host government that we're partnering with, uh, and with private sector companies, and with open source technologists and experts, academia, foundations, and of course the UN country team to, to design R&D projects to, to try new, new forms of analysis. And to quickly run through how we do these collaborative R&D projects, it has to start with a question. Our UN system partners come to us with a question, and we are open for business all the time looking for interesting research questions, like can you use, uh, can you scrape websites to get price information in a way that's faster than waiting for the monthly CPI? Maybe you can. You could bring that kind of a question to Global Pulse. We together would craft a proposal. And then together, we would conduct the research that's required. And to do the research, we need data, and we need tools, and we need expertise. So if we're talking about doing social media analysis, we need access to social media data. That might be the, the tweets, uh, the archive of all the tweets in the world, or search data, or mobile phone data, as the case may be. We need the tools to make that analysis, and we need experts, data scientists, sometimes our own in-house data scientists, sometimes we collaborate with external experts to the project, and we evaluate and we share our findings. We, this is all really very iterative. We, we learn as we go and we publish our methods papers and we share what we learn. And that feeds the cycle of our, our research and development. Um, very quickly, there's a few elements which I, I described, but just to summarize, none of these projects can happen without a great research question, first of all. We want to make sure that all of our R&D projects are grounded in real needs of the UN system. They are applied research. They're not just research for research's sake. Uh, we want to find new methods and new tools that could be helpful in your work. 
So first the question, and the domain experts, that's you. Those of you who are working on the issues of health and sanitation and health behavior every day and have the question of what, what the context is, what the country context is, uh, what, the, what the sociological dimensions <coughs> of this issue are. Then we need data scientists and engineers. Again, as I mentioned, some of them are in-house, our own Global Pulse staff members. Sometimes we do this through partnerships with institutions or, or private sector companies who have uh, data scientists who want to work with us pro bono on an interesting project. And we need research managers or translators. We need people who can be the bridge figure. And that's what uh, a lot of our staff uh, functions to do. Um, as I mentioned, none of this is possible without partnerships and access to data. We use a phrase called data philanthropy. This is basically the idea that big data is a raw public good, that there is an opportunity to share data for the, for the betterment of, of the public. And so we partner with companies or organizations that have access to interesting data streams. Sometimes they give us access to their data pro bono. It may be a company that already does analysis of search data, and they may sell it usually, but maybe make it available to us pro bono. In other instances, it's data that's already publicly available. In other instances, it may be an in-house research project, let's say with a mobile phone company, to do some analysis. We need technology tools. We need partners with, with the computing power to do some of these incredible feats of analysis. As Hillary described, sometimes you need a supercomputer. Sometimes you need really serious storage capabilities. So we have to have technology partners in order to do the, to the, re to do the research and the work. And we need the human expertise. Um, I already mentioned this, but just quickly. So there are many ways where we gain access to data. Again, Global Pulse is not doing ongoing monitoring. We're not a data collection organization. We're doing data analysis for the purposes of our R&D projects. And so we're looking at opportunities to work with companies who can provide us pro bono or license-free access. For example, we're in a discussion with Twitter to waive the license fees and costs to be able to access all of the archive of Twitter and all of the future tweets going forward. Those are publicly available data sets, but usually if you're a private sector company, you pay to have access to that. Um, but they're willing to work with the United Nations to make that available pro bono. Uh, another mo modality is to share a uh, data set under NDA for analysis. So um, we're talking to a company, Nielsen, which does a lot of data collection, and they're interested in doing a collaborative project where they would make available to us a data set under NDA to do some analysis. Another way is for the researchers of a company to do the analysis in-house themselves. So we would guide them in asking a research question and they would do analysis on their own internal data and together we would learn whether there's some insight in that data source. And these two forms are really not here today, but in the future perhaps we can find a way towards a real-time data commons. That is, data that can be publicly available safely may, is made publicly available safely for analysis for the greater good. And if the data cannot be made available, perhaps public private sector companies could analyze for early warnings and indicators and trends that we've identified as important. For example, if a mobile phone company does learn that they have indicators of drought, perhaps they should we should move towards a world where they're able to warn the, the authorities when they see these kinds of trends. Um, and the last <coughs> piece before I pass on to Miguel, very important piece, of course, is the privacy and data protection. As I mentioned, we have a, a, a legal specialist, a data privacy officer on our team. We're in the middle of developing a series of principles that guide all of our work. Um, in general, uh, there's a lot to it, and we have a, a handout in the back if you're interested to know what's in the principles that we're currently developing. But in general, just to, to note um, before I, I leave it to Miguel, all of our research is on the aggregate level. We are not interested in personally identifiable information because you can't make policy decisions on one person. So this is where it differs, and I will mention the elephant in the room, what you've seen in the news about um, surveillance. It's not about tracking individuals. It doesn't matter if one person tweets that they have HIV. If thousands of people tweet that they have the flu or a disease or whatnot, that's what matters more. And it's not about who they are, but the demographic level or the community level is what, what is important. So all of the work we do is on an aggregate level. Um, and, and again, we're, we're guided by very, um, very stringent privacy principles that we are developing as we go with input from experts.